All right, guys, welcome back. This is, I believe, episode 24. This is Teacher's Lounge. We're at block height 649,703, and the current pl- price is 10,298. All right, guys, so uh, let's let's have everyone introduce themselves this week, and then we'll, we'll get into some, some topics. So we'll start with um, Andrew. Well, yeah, uh, my name is Andrew Howard. Uh, Twitter handle is Andrew underscore J underscore Howard. I don't really care about being anonymous on Twitter. Um, I moved to Mexico about seven months ago just to get away from all the tyranny and just live a you know an actual free life. And I am uh, the chief business development officer of an OTC desk called Bitcoin Reserve. Let's go. All right, next we got Ben the Carman. Oh, I'm uh, Ben the Carman. I work at Shardbits, being a developer. And, uh, the primary thing I work on is DLCs. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, 2A, did you want to introduce yourself this week? Or... Hey, hi guys. I'm from Colombia, Bogota. I'm a Bitcoin stacker and shit, and that's it. <laughs> For sure. Uh, Bit Consultants, glad to have you back. Oh, not sure you heard me. Bit Consultants, you want to introduce yourself? He might be away from the computer. All right, well, yeah, you guys know if you're listening to the show. Next, we got Justifer. Whatever, everybody. I uh, I like lightning. I also love the show, so keep it coming. Let's go. Uh, back on on that point of keeping it coming, dude. That one tweet you did the other day, I like that. Keep them coming. The lightning one. Thanks so much. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, next we got Nico. What's up, guys? My name's Nico, CEO of Bitvault.com. If you need a place to host your ASIC miners, definitely hit me up. And also the host of Simply Bitcoin. Yee, yee, yee. Uh, next, we got Surfer Jim. <laughs> he was just in here. Maybe he's away from the computer. He'll jump in. Surfer Jim. He's surfing. He's surfing. Yeah, yeah. Surfing Twitter. <laughs> I expect to... Um not be here for introductions <laughs> oh he fall off his internet's probably acting weird uh and last but certainly not least we got dylan what's up guys just uh sat stacker happy to come chat once a week let's go all right guys so um this week I, me. Can oh you hear me? yeah there you go jim you want to introduce yourself you couldn't hear me before could you nah Nope. Yeah, my, something weirds out, man. I hear everybody else, and then somehow I'm just disconnected. And and my microphone button was off. But anyway, yeah, I'm just a local New York surfer that loves Bitcoin, likes hanging out with all these other crazy Bitcoiners here. So let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. So uh, the first topic actually was brought up by Jestifer this week. Um, he was telling us, well, it's actually two lightning related topics that Jessifer brought up. Um, one was a five BTC Wumbo channel, which was pretty incredible. And then the next one was all time high number of Bitcoins on lightning. So Jessifer, you want to, you want to chime in a little bit and maybe give us some of the importance on this? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a, a five Bitcoin channel, uh, I mean, that's, it's, it's going to help out a whole lot with some of the liquidity issues. I mean, for me personally, as like a small time routing node, it, it kind of, uh, kind of took over my routing income. So, uh, so, but like it, it's, it's a good thing to like, keep in mind that uh, routing nodes operate in a network. So, you know, suddenly the, all this liquidity got added and now I'm not making like routing income like how I normally would, but eventually as there's like more commerce 
on the Lightning Network, um, someone needs to be able to facilitate those transactions. And that's, that's where routing nodes come in. Um, so when a big player opens a Wombo channel, uh, like a five Bitcoin one, so that means that that money is readily available um, for to like to allow instant settlements to happen, uh, which is fantastic for businesses. Um, and like, as this liquidity wave comes in, um, it it will eventually die down. But the fact is, uh, like with the fee rate that they have set uh, with that five Bitcoin, um, and depending on demand. Uh, whenever that gets exhausted, uh, they'll be uh, taking away about $95 worth of Bitcoin. Uh, so that is uh, an example of... Sorry, bro. Um, of, uh, and that's in a, a non-custodial fashion. I, I got a question on that $95. Is that like per... like how what is that like every month or, or what what's going on with that? So it's it's simply based on demand for that liquidity. Uh, okay. So if there's a lot of commerce happening um, at a business, it's going to be pulling from that liquidity. So for example, I opened a channel to Citadel 21. Um, and as people are buying zines, sometimes they use uh, my channel to Citadel 21. And each time that they do, I generate a small routing fee. And so like even when I'm being extremely greedy, uh, that will be a 0.2% fee that I'm collecting. So compare that to say like uh, Square or uh, you know one of those one of those other companies that charge credit transaction fees, uh, which is like usually like four percent or twenty five cents. So I'm I'm accruing like a tiny amount, uh, a tiny fraction of that. But it's still a meaningful return for me. Okay, so he's whoever put up the Wumbo channel for five BTC, they're going to get back roughly what a little under a million sets. That yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyone else want to chime in on this real quick? All right. Well, then I'm all, oh get get it, Ben. I'm gonna say, sure hope they don't get hacked because that was a lot of Bitcoin. Yeah, that that <laughs> was literally my next question. Did you guys see uh, Juice Joe uh, Jager? I don't know how to say his name. Uh, uh, Juice Jager. Yeah, Juice Jager. Did you see his his lightning thread this like yesterday or whatever? The uh, it was like a firewall kind of thing. Yeah, he so, like, said. Something like if someone had a script and they were able to hit your Wumbo channels with 483 single sat HTLCs pending on a channel, then it, it like could break, I don't know, break the break the channel and, and you lose the funds or something like that. I honestly wasn't even aware of that. Yeah, so for a lightning channel, like when you have like a... A payment that's like in the progress, progress being routed, you add like that HTLC output to like a transaction, and uh, according to like the Lightning specification, the max is like 483, or whatever you said, something like that. 40, 47, it's around there. So if someone just filled those all up with one set outputs, then you can't fit anything more on there. And so like, you could if you're like a competing routing node, you could do that to someone so now they're going to only be routing your one sat uh, transactions and then you can f not be filled up any route you know the 10,000 sat transactions and get higher routing fees so this is the way to like prevent that so you could like filter out like quote unquote bad transactions from you and you know get a higher optimization of your routing node or just prevent spam interesting did, did you gather from that 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 they would actually lose funds from that or just the channel would become inactive um i mean i think it might have been both 
Yeah, I mean, there's like other attacks that like kind of tie into this, like the flood and loot, where like you flood someone's stuff and then make them like pay a whole bunch of fees if you have to. If, like, it's like you could fill their whole thing up and then if they want to close that channel now, they're gonna have to put all of those HTLCs on chain. So now they're gonna pay a ton of fees for those one sat outputs, which is gonna suck. So, um. Yeah, so there's like problems there where you like they could, if you force them to on, go on chain, they're not gonna have to pay a whole bunch of fees and you could lose a bunch of funds, especially if you know we have high fee times. You wouldn't lose the five Bitcoin though. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I was like, I was kind of excited about that attack. It was like, oh, well, like there, <laughs> I would get my income back, <laughs> my, my <laughs> yield, uh, like just to see what temporary knock out the competition but i mean we've got like tons of redundancy i mean lots of people like to you know connect to cool businesses like citadel 21 so um yeah it would i mean that would be great for me but uh <laughs> as far as like the lightning network like there's no consensus that we have to wait on like you just if you come up with a way to fix that then like we all get to benefit because the whole thing's open source and we don't have to wait for a consensus so yeah i mean it's, it's the whole point it's great you don't need a blockchain for everything Ooh, <laughs> shit corners are pissed that you just said that <laughs> <laughs> oh man well, that's good all right well uh i guess i guess we we covered that one um some other some other topics that uh came up this week that I noticed. Um I honestly didn't even look too much into this, but I think it's a good point to conversate on. Um so Kraken's now a bank. Uh did did anyone uh look into the details on this or what what are your guys' thoughts on on that one? Yeah, I'll jump in if you guys don't mind. Um I covered it earlier on one of my segments. Um, it's a complete game changer, man, because like, honestly, like the, 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 the biggest like point of friction between Bitcoin and the traditional financial world is the on and off ramps. And now the, the mere fact that like having one bank account, like for everything, just, it, it, it makes my life as, 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 as a as a as a hosting provider a lot easier right because not not only can i accept uh payments in bitcoin i can also accept payments in cash and i could easily convert them all under one roof right because i'm just using the the crack in exchange and they're also going to offer debit cards as well and i'm sure they're going to offer other you know traditional uh you know financial products so dude it, it completely changes the the entire game you know, and, 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 and kudos to Wyoming for taking that initiative. They're kind of like the new Delaware, um, you know, so of, of, of crypto, man, you know. And I think that what Catelyn, uh, Catelyn Long did over there was that was nothing short of incredible, man. She, she really killed it. Interesting. So are they, are they uh, doing like Bitcoin custody as well? Or are they just like... So no, they're, they're, it's just like it's awesome, man. It's like a bank. Like imagine this. Like I'm assuming most of you guys in, in this thing, you know, you have a Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Bank of whatever. Now you could just drop that. You don't need that anymore, and you could just have a crack in bank account, which is completely integrated with the exchange, right? So like, no longer are the days where it's like on Cash App or you know Gemini or whatever exchange you use where it takes five business days in order for them to release your funds or like on cash app, you know, with the limits and, and all that stuff, like it's going to be seamless because it's all under one roof, you know? So, so at, it, so like for, for, uh, you know, for a consumer, it, it, it's just, it's just going to make their life easier. But as a business owner, it's a game changer, man. It's a game changer because I get paid in Bitcoin, you know, I get paid in fiat and it, and the, 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 the inoperability between the two is it's it's horrific bro it's horrendous you know and like that's why i feel like a lot of businesses haven't jumped in because 
it, dude, it, it, it's a pain in the ass. It, it really is. And, and if you do want to do an exchange, you're going to lose some money because of the fee. But now that it's all under Kraken, all, all now that it's all under Kraken's roof, it, it completely changes the game, especially for for businesses that weren't so sure about getting into Bitcoin before. But now they that now they could bank with Kraken, and Kraken will do all the heavy lifting for you. So, so I find it really bullish for uh, you know for for the infrastructure being built for Bitcoin. Yeah, that 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 was my thoughts uh, when you were explaining this. I'm like, dang, this bull run is going to be even bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, what, what um, are you saying? What are you their, saying ben? Like one of their huge points about it is they're 100 percent like fully reserved, unlike you know any other bank has zero requirement to hold any money in the bank, versus they have 100 percent like your funds are actually there. So. Like I think as Bitcoiners we're all very against fractional reserve banking and you know, they kinda yeah. you have an account there, you don't need to worry about that. Like you can't have a run on this bank because they actually have your money. And well what, what's nice. awesome what's awesome, Ben, is is uh so uh Unchained like announced today that they're basically, you know, launching this business uh the uh multi sig but orientated toward businesses, right? So it's super awesome because they have this UI where like the CEO has certain access to a certain amount of keys. You know, the employee has only access to one key. And normally, if 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 you wanted to do that as as a business, you would have to build all that your uh, all that yourself, right? Which you know you need a highly technical person to do that. And at the end of the day, the end at the end of the day, you're still trusting that other person. But if you use uh, Unchained Capital Service, which is relatively cheap, especially compared to Casa, bro, it, it changes the game because all of a sudden you don't need to use a custodial service to store your Bitcoin. You could store your Bitcoin yourself using the power of multisig. Bullish, guys. This is, uh, like Nico said, it's looking like the infrastructure is getting built out and Shit, look at us. We're just shit posting over here and stacking sats. I'm getting I'm getting a Donald Duck boner over here, guys. <laughs> nah, bro. Only, only only Nick only Nick can pull that off. Oh, I know. Oh, speaking of I do you guys know that Nick's a big blocker now? Oh yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking, I'm joking. You might want to explain that joke for the viewer. Okay. Uh <laughs> well, we I tag Nick and we me, Nico and Nick have a running joke about that uh Nick has a micro penis and um oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just a joke guys. I'm not being serious. Uh anyway, sorry Jim. Um sure? <laughs> All right, all right. The strip club it was kind of cool. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll keep it. We'll, we'll keep it moving. We'll, we'll keep now it we're moving. recording. You switch up the story. <laughs> Fuck you, bro. He has, he has a big schlong. <laughs> we'll keep it moving. This is teachers' lounge. After all, we could do what we want. All right. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to timeout. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Be quiet. Um, the dunce. The dunce hat on in the corner. <laughs> All right, uh, this next one I was also brought up by Justifer. Um, he pointed out, I forget when it was, it was somewhere around Monday, I, I believe, that we had an 11% difficulty adjustment upwards and that we were still getting really fast blocks. So we, me, Nico, and Justifer were all tripping out and, and just losing losing our are gourd because it's just so bullish. So, Jesper, what were your thoughts when you when you were putting this one in? Well, okay, my first thought was, oh my god, I'm never going to see a one sat transaction again. When <laughs> once I saw cuz I was like I was preparing for this difficulty adjustment. So like so for me like running lightning, like I'm trying to open as many channels as I can before that difficulty adjustment happens. Because, you know, what I'm worried about is like, oh, oh, man, like the, the suddenly, like, we're not going to be able to get the confirmations that I need. And all these transactions are going to start piling up between blocks. 
and I'm never going to get a cheap channel open again. Um, so, you know, me being cheap as hell, like trying to get channels open, but, but then, but then when the difficulty adjustment actually happened and then the blocks were still coming in, I was blown away. I was trying to find out like what hardware got deployed to like actually give us that much hash power that was completely new that had never existed before in the system in order to like make blocks happen that fast under 10 minutes. Um, and so that's when I was asking Nico, like what is going on here? Uh, like, was there some huge hardware release? What's going on? Well, dude, actually, the 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 like, okay, so wow, this this is a huge geopolitical fucking okay. All right, so um, in 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 the tr the biggest mining, this is I, I'm gonna make this very quick because I could talk about this for an hour and a half. Um, okay. So the, the, the mining consortium right now in, in China, the biggest my, the ASIC manufacturer, they're called Bitmain. They're infighting between, um, I think the, the name of the miner is like NO Miner. And um, they're, they're losing a significant amount of market share. But what you're seeing is a huge investment in countries like Iran, Kazakhstan, Texas, and the northern United States. So, it, but like a huge influx, bro. Like I'm talking about, uh, I think Marty Bent uh, has been posting some videos where, where it, it's just a, a, a tremendous amount of investment is is being put into into Bitcoin mining. So, but that doesn't directly answer the question. To directly answer your question, you have to understand, man, that when you set up, when you set up an operation, okay, it takes... I would say like one or one to three months. Okay. Because you have to build out the infrastructure. You have to build out, you have to buy the miners. You have to source the miners, the S 19s right now, which are like the top of the line from Bitmain, I still cannot get my hands on them for a reasonable price. It's literally fucking impossible. And I've been trying to get my hands on it, and and I and I'm and, and I like Bitmain, and a lot of people don't like Bitmain, but I like Bitmain because they've always treated me really well, and I can't get them for a reasonable price, right? So what does that tell? What does that tell? What does that tell me, right? That tells me that these miners are so, they're they're so they're such in demand right now that it's absolutely absurd. I had a client come up to me the other day. I think I posted about it on Twitter. It was like it was like a month or two ago, and he wanted to set up S nines with me. I think it was I think it was 162 S nines, and he wanted to host them with me. And I was like, dude, are you crazy? Like, you know, you, you might lose money on them. At the end of the day, the, the guy killed it, bro. The guy killed it. He's still making money on those machines. So it, it, it's it's there's such a demand for miners right now. Even the S nine is is kind of hard to get. So the mining community, right? And and remember that the, there's like a there's like a three to four month delay, right? Uh oh, I totally just put myself in another channel. So the mining community is so freaking bullish right now. Like they're so bullish, and it, it's not you, you can't compare the mining community as as the retail community, where it's like you wake up and you're like, wow, I want to go stack some sats on Cash App. No, 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 bro. This is smart money, and it's very capital intensive, and they're thinking like four to six months ahead, right? I, I got it. Uh, I, I got into uh, a, a kind of kind of a, a Twitter battle with uh, you know, rest in peace. Uh, he 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 passed away recently, Matt D'Souza, um, and he was basically making the claim that um, the hash rate was going to drop by thirty percent. And I said, that's absolutely false. And I was right. The hash rate just reached all time high, even after the halving, right? And that's because miners, you don't have an option not to plan ahead. If I was going into the halving, not expecting that my revenue was going to drop by 50%, it, it, like I would be dead in the water, right? Miners are prepared and they're like four months ahead of what, you see the price and what you see the retail doing. So like, that's why I always say that the hash rate 
that the, the sorry that the 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 price doesn't follow the hash rate but the hat no 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 sorry the hash rate doesn't follow the price but the price always follows the hash rate so what what genuinely tends to happen is that historically speaking and just 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 by just just by me understanding like the mining world when you see the the hash rate reaching all time highs the way it has been it's telling me that bitcoin is going to is about to pump like you've never seen before because the miners need that revenue they need it they need it to survive man and they wouldn't be they wouldn't be investing in so much equipment and so many machines bro the cheapest machines like a thousand bucks a thousand fifty a thousand five hundred dollars right and they're they're buying hundreds of these machines right so th the smart money wouldn't be making those types of investments if they didn't think that bitcoin was going to rise radically within the next within the next i would say seven seven to 18 months i hope that answers your question Bullish. I literally Bullish. I can talk about this for like two hours, but uh, Dylan, you want to ask your question? Yeah, um, I don't know if it's a question or more. I guess yeah, I guess a question for Nico. Um, and this is just my, like kind of how I thought about like miners and like the having and like the price, um, the price reaction, like especially after these having events. And like I believe in stock to flow, but I'm not like you know just a straight up moon boy thinking it's gonna follow this thing exactly. Like the having causes the price to go up, obviously. But I I kind of think that like when or this is how I I don't really know, but my thinking was after the having when all of these inefficient miners basically like if you're not making a profit or you barely were before the having, you can't stay on. So, you know, all of these all this new hash rate has to go find the cheapest energy around the world. So they can they can stay on even if the revenue gets cut by fifty percent or or you know what I mean? Like after the having, or if the price doesn't moon right away, like these guys can get squeezed all day long. They're not going to turn off, and they have to find super super cheap energy, maybe free well, energy. Like, it's, so it's, doesn't it's, that contribute to like lesser selling pressure? So over so time? it's not it, it. So it's not only that, right? Like there's two components. Like for example, I'm about to start expanding back to Venezuela again because the political situation has calmed down. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to still keep uh, mining in South Carolina, but I'm going to go back to Venezuela and I'm probably going to make a bigger operation over there. And that's because the price of electricity is still subsidized. So I could be, I could buy an S nine and I can mine it in Venezuela and nowhere in the wor world would that machine be profitable, but that machine is profitable in Venezuela because it's you're mining for free. Right. So if you're mining for free, you're, you're getting something, you know, it might not be a lot, but you're mining for free. So why are you going to turn it off now to answer the second component of your question? The big mining consortiums, what they'll do is that they'll pump up the hash rate to weed out all the other guys. Right. So they don't mind bleeding. Like, I, I don't know if you guys have read like the everything store, but the, the Jeff Bezos book where he lot he, where he sold the Harry Potter books at a loss for like two years just to beat Barnes and Nobles, just to say that I'm out, he was selling cheaper books than Barnes and Nobles, right? At the end of the day, he won. These mining consortiums, especially the, the Chinese, and I'm very happy that Bitmain is, is having some infighting right now because they controlled, in 2017, bro, they were crazy. They controlled like 75% of, of the mining manufacturing of the mining machines, you know, and they, they pulled off the Bitcoin cash. You see, it's very dangerous when one manufacturer has that much control. But to answer your question, like these guys don't mind losing money for two or three months, right? Maybe four, maybe five, just to kill everybody else around them. You got what I'm trying to tell you? So if they'll flash like crazy, bring up the 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 price difficulty uh the sorry the the mining difficulty just so that the other guys can't compete unless they're, they're getting free electricity at the end of the day for a miner like myself or for other people it kind of sucks but for but for but uh but but for for the consumer uh, sorry not the consumer but for the user of the bitcoin network 
it's extremely beneficial to you because it just means you're, you're using a safer network, right? So, so it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing because this arms race that's happening right now, this mining arms race that's continuously ha- happening, you know, there, there's hash roars, there's, there's pools sending fake, uh, fake, uh, fake hash, uh, fake, uh, fake, uh, I forget the name, uh, sending fake blocks to, to miners to hash them, to, to, to waste their time so that they could mine the real blocks and they have a higher probability of getting it. And then the big mining consortiums have no problem wasting electricity or, or going in the negative for three or four months just to kill the other guys, just to kill the small guys, right? And, and that just keeps happening over and over again. But the but we all win. As users of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network grows stronger because that's happening. I hope that answered your question. Dude, I could talk about this for like five hours. Bullish. Um, I think while we're on the topic of mining, Bit Consultants put in a, a tweet in the chat by uh, Steve Barber, and he said, "We have been contracted by a city to mine Bitcoin. That's all I'm saying for now." Hashtag Ohm, and uh, like someone said it on Twitter. So when when are we all moving to that city? <laughs> <laughs> uh dude so like I'll, I'll i'll add a little bit to this i know i've been talking a lot but i'll make it short um so what what you'll what what you've been seeing right in in iran in venezuela in kazakhstan is that you're seeing these huge initiatives by the governments to mine bitcoin right and it's either to kind of circumvent capital controls and to take advantage of the of the of the huge natural resources which provide very cheap electricity so it's not only cities that are mining bitcoin it's actual government it's countries that are doing this i ran uh i did me and me and phil were talking about this earlier on our show um i ran kazakhstan venezuela you know it, 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 it's 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 happening all over the place but the most important part and i'll end it on this is that this further decentralizes the bitcoin network so it's overall a very good thing god dang i am bullish boys i am bullish uh anyone want to chime in on this thoughts feelings I just Did... <laughs> there you go Nico made me Nico made me <laughs> let's go all right well um I have one hey, optimist. Yeah, get it, Jim. Do you know if there's an average block time on the Clark Moody dashboard? Um, like what it's been that, for some some given period of time. I don't think there is an average on there. I was looking at the uh, uh, I was looking at this website mempool.com while you guys were talking, and a lot of the hours in the past twenty four hours had more than six blocks, so that means they were less than 10 minutes a couple of the hours had two or three and hour 19 had one block in a whole hour so it still does vary quite a bit but overall my gut tells me that the blocks are coming in on average less than 10 minutes yeah so, so I was Jim, if we had that yeah so off the top of my head they're coming they're they're coming in between 9 45 and 9 30. Off Where the top of my head, that? I is that uh, Jim? Is that uh, one of the metrics on the uh, Jim? Dashboard? Jim, there it, is one of the metrics dude. on on is, uh, right? Clark Moody's dashboard. Go look under the mining tab, and then they got a block mining. time, um, the last two hundred and sixteen blocks, and block it says time. there you go. It says nine, nine minutes. Yeah. yeah, I knew what it was, was it, Jim? There's so many lines on here. I got to stare at Jim, it for a while. What was it? Did I, did I get it you, right? You, yeah, you were close, Nico. It's nine minute and twenty one seconds. For the oh, last okay. 2,016 right, cool. blocks. Yeah, I forgot where I got that from. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it's a little fast. But, right, cool. but, bro, but that's a good thing. It's a good I thing. I know it is. Uh, I know that's. it reinforces what you were saying. That's why I was bringing it up. It's a good thing, dude. The arms race is, is such a – it's like capitalism, man. Like, com- like companies compete for the best product to, to whatever and the consumer always wins and it's the same thing with the with the miners man and what what's really 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 bullish 
like super bullish is that I've been seeing lately a lot um, further decentralization out of China. And that makes me very happy because that was one thing that bothered me very much for a long time is that the, that the majority of, of the hash rate was coming from China. But now you're starting to see a, 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 um, uh, uh, um, like a, like a decentralization of that, right? You're seeing Venezuela, you're seeing Iran, you're seeing Kazakhstan in Texas. There's this huge mining boom, right? So th that that makes me the ha that makes me so happy that seeing that, you know, because that was a, that was a big worry of mine that all the hash rate that was supporting the Bitcoin network was based in China. Fucking hey. Well, man. Jeez. It looks like we're uh, getting set up for a really, really crazy next few years. And um, I have, I had this kind of topic. I, uh, I forget what I was listening to. Uh, it's not really a topic. It's more just like speculation. I was listening to a few podcasts and it just got me thinking. And so the question is basically um are we for this next bull market are we going to follow the same structure as previous bull markets so the four-year cycle um like to a t or are we going to go into a prolonged bull market or uh like longer market cycles so what what are you guys thinking are we doing like to the t four-year um bitcoin having cycle or are we going to do like a prolonged bull market where this next bull market will play out maybe over two having events or something like that. Super cycle. Super cycle. Yeah, I just feel like the the supply is dwindling quicker every day, and the demand is growing. So there's only one place for that to go. Yeah. Institution. Really. Um name put the 500 million last week or so or a couple weeks ago this one there was a institution back in march that did it i was looking through my old tweets people are putting their cash reserves into bitcoin because what you you know why the hell bet on this money printing machine that not even a money printing machine it's just like a zero on a keyboard that's all it is that the fed add zeros to the end of the count not even like they're printing money anymore it's just digital at a zero. Yeah, I agree. I um, I'm a little more cynical. Like the last bull market, I think Tether had a lot to do with it, <clears throat> and I still think there's a lot of sketchy stuff going on with that. But um, you didn't have companies like MicroStrategy putting in almost half of a billion dollars in uh, in Bitcoin then. You know, plus the you know the supply and with it, with the having. Um, like it'll be more of a kind of more of an authentic bull market this time, especially with the Fed uh, keeping interest rates. I think they said that they signaled interest rates to be at zero percent until 2023. So that's bullish AF for Bitcoin, in my opinion. Let's go. We got Coin Acres in the in the chat going ten trillion dollar BTC next year, and Nick saying that's bearish. Pump them numbers <laughs> up. No, but uh, I, I think I agree with you guys. I, I kind of get the idea like as much as, you know, I'm, I'm relatively new. I, I haven't seen a full, um, a full market cycle yet. But just from the research I've done, you know, my instinct is telling me that we're going to follow the four-year uh, market cycle. But... I, I'm kind of with Bit Consultants on the idea of the super cycle. It's like we're we're no longer just just uh, you know a small boat in in the ocean of the a fiat ocean. You know we're we're turning into like a huge cruise liner or something. You know an aircraft carrier, what have you. And so you know with with bigger with you know bigger market cap, it's it takes a lot more uh, liquidity to push the market around and, and turn the market around. And so maybe, you know, I, I just, I have this nagging idea that it might take us a little while to 
um, past the 20K, and even then we might have to test 20K a little bit. And so it's going to take a little while to turn this ship around. But once it starts moving, it's going to start moving. And then the, the newer liquidity from the next halving cycle might not, you know, the, the lows might not be as, as big as we're so used to. And it could just, you know, maybe this is when we... Uh, we leave we leave the the stratosphere and, and it's just continues to number go up till till we all die but that's just my hope i'm speaking i think you're like kind of right there like eventually though there's gonna be no more barren bull markets and we'll just have bitcoin as money and I don't know, we're in a pretty good macro environment for that to happen maybe not but I think one or two cycles and it's just kind of going to happen eventually where there's no more cycles. And yeah, I got a question for you guys. We should go one by one. Shoot what it. will the price of Bitcoin be at the end of 2030? Optimist. God damn, 2030, 10 years from now. Um, let's go 10 million. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's what I'm thinking too, bro. Alright, Nick. Nick. Ten years from now. Yeah. When I'm you're, gonna when be you're, when you're when you're 67. Ten years from now, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be bearish and say five million. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Jim. Jim, what's your expectation, buddy? Higher. 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 Okay. Twenty million. Much higher. Thirty million. No, no, just much higher than it is now. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. So a uh, hundred million. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. One day. If <laughs> I get to see it. Jim's the wisest one. I want to see a hundred million because that makes one side a dollar. Yeah. I, I think that. Yeah. Be I, I honestly, um, what. Who was it that said before? Big consultants were saying about, you know, is it dwindling supply? And the demand was seen it all around us. It's actually, it makes me fascinated to see the price drop and wonder who is selling at lower and lower prices. Oh, it's been beaming. That, that allows guys like us to buy it. <laughs> you know, it's like kind of funny. Because it doesn't bother me one bit that it's going down. I, I kind of like it because I'm not worried about the long run. All right. What 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 about you, Dylan? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Somewhere in the in the in like that vicinity that you guys were saying, I honestly think that, and this may be kind of bold, but I think that the prices will start to be, in the later stage of this decade, it will be like sats per dollar. Um, so I would do hundred million, hundred million. Let's go. Hundred million, yeah. hundred million BTC. All right. Fuck yeah, bro. <laughs> well, no, no, like into like. So right now you can get like 10,000 sats for a dollar or like around there. So I don't know, maybe uh, like fucking 20, 20 sats per dollar. That's like 5 million when it said, I don't know. I think, I think the denomination changes because like just the like units it. get so small. I like it. All right. What about you, Joe? He might be on dad duty. He might just be listening. All right. Justifer. I don't want to say a number. I think my time, I, I, so yeah, you're... like time is a real scarce resource. So I hope, I hope my my time is still worth Bitcoin. Uh, so I, you know, I got a. It's a race for just how many skills you can get right now. Bro, what are you talking about, bro? You know, you know the amount of time that you that you work on Lightning, bro. You'll probably be a gazillionaire by just all running all your fucking Lightning nodes. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I don't want to put a number to it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. No, I, I think it'll be enough. All right, well, I think what he's trying to say is that he's super bearish and he doesn't want to get shamed, so we'll we'll uh, we'll let it slide. And <laughs> Phil, Coin Icarus, drop us some wisdom. 2030. I don't know. I've been thinking about it the whole time. <laughs> well, let coin makers think a little more. Joe put in the chat one million in four years, oh, one million per coin. I like that, Joe. Dang, I like that, Joe. That's bullish. 
That's super bully. Uh, All right, I'm go- I'm going with 137 million. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yo, what, party, what, party, party on Coin Acres' yacht. Right. What would that market cap even be? It'd be insane. <laughs> like what's the one trillion market cap for bitcoin what is that like 50k or something yeah it's like yeah, 50k 50k all right so <laughs> okay never mind i can't do maths maths is hard <laughs> dude but legitimately like a hundred trillion dollar market cap is just that just takes and like the the global bond market cap I, like i think i mean a lot of it's estimated and like it's rehypothecated shit so no one really knows. I mean, you can't audit that stuff. <laughs> but I mean, that dude, that's easily a hundred billion, two hundred billion dollar market. Just bonds, and like they all yield like close to negative in real in real yield right now. Like it's it's wild. So Bitcoin. I mean, like we say in these numbers, and like we're half joking, but like really we're not. <laughs> like like it's gonna eat all that garbage. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree with I agree with Nick. Two hundred k within the next two years for sure. All right, and uh, who's next? Oh, right, big consultants. I was gonna say to Jim earlier. He was asking who was selling. And it's the weak hands, you know. People like uh, Per Strategy not selling anytime soon. That guy's like holding. So there's always weak hands, and then once. Just get smaller and smaller, it just shoots up. All right, but what, give me a number, bro. All right, all right. Um, uh, I thought 10 million was high, but then I was thinking, like, yeah, 10 million. <laughs> SD term is probably not going to be anywhere near 10 million. It'll be like 50 to 100 at least. In terms of like other value, like Jessifer's answer, he just said, I hope it's worth my time. Because it's the ultimate currency. What about you? Citadel for one Bitcoin. 2030. <laughs> one fully furnished Citadel for one Bitcoin. <laughs> Let's amen, go. Amen to that. <laughs> and the car, man. Drop us your wisdom. Oh, God. Um... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on. Two A's got to go. Colombia. What's the number, bro? Before you leave. <laughs> I think I think he's gone. Anyways, Ben, what were you gonna say? See, I think um... Nico, one million. One million? Oh yeah! Wait, wait, wait! By when? In by when? ten years, though, that's bearish. You're too bearish. That's bearish. <laughs> that's so bearish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Bro, it's it's because he's distracted, bro. That that Colombian ass, bro. <laughs> judges your cloud. Judges your. You can't think. Um, but yeah, all right, well, all right, so I think if it's small bigger, I will go to crazy. If it, if it goes too 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 high, I will lose my mind. <laughs> I think it's like conservative, oh, it's conservative bad. amount to keep my sanity. Yo, a two a if if Bitcoin reaches a million dollars, we're all going to Medellin. <laughs> You're gonna show us around, bro. I, I just want to I just want to oh. see Nick's face, bro. <laughs> I've seen his face, and it's pretty goddamn hilarious when he's in the moment. <laughs> All, right. All right, Ben. ben car- yeah, shoot ben us here. Um, so I I kind of said this before, but I think like once we hit a certain price, it just kind of hits like terminal velocity, and just every other currency will just like die and like a few months because everyone just adopts a bitcoin standard Let's and go. so i'm not sure if that happens by 2030 if it does then then the price will be infinite if it doesn't then we'll probably be like right under a million or something Let's so go. i'll leave it at that i like it that might that might uh, even be the most bullish statement yet it's like joseph is in the <laughs> chat like what is a dollar at that point you know exactly. that's true that is very true. But Andrew, Andrew, you chime in because your comment in here is that's really good in the chat. Yeah, dude, I feel like we just forget that. <laughs> Where is fiat currency going to be in ten years from now? You know? Like, I, I don't. I know every Bitcoiner and 
and cap thinks the dollar is going to die tomorrow, but I definitely don't picture it surviving 10 years from now. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty damn sure the countries that adopt Bitcoin the most are the ones that deal with hyperinflation the most. Like there's that uh, little town in El Salvador, they just run literally everything on Lightning and they don't use fiat at all because they're just done with that shit. So, um, so man, I can't give a number, but <laughs> I, I feel like it's not even like nobody's going to really care about fiat as much as they do now 10 years from now that's what i think i love that Let's answer go bullish fuck fiat. I, I, fiat. Feel like, I feel like the fbi is just gonna raid all our houses tomorrow we're, we're still a joke bro they don't take us seriously yeah, that's true. I, I lost my Bitcoin in a boating accident. Dude, I don't even hold Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. Bitcoin? What is that? <laughs> I thought it was a joke. I'm nerd money. Like, you want to be interested? In... Yeah, dude. If I we... mean, it's it's a high tra or high velocity trash economy. We don't even hold Bitcoin. We just send it back and forth to each other to make it look like a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a Ponzi scheme. By the Ponzi, Ponzi is Safu. Uh, I think I cut someone off. Was someone trying to go in there before we started jogging? I was. Uh, I, think, oh. I was. I was just gonna say if we, you know, if we get technical, we actually none of us actually hold any Bitcoin. Because the Bitcoin is always on the network. There's <laughs> simply there's simply just private keys which allow you access to a specific location on the network. Let's so, go. I mean, you know, what then that makes us question, like, what really is ownership then? I mean, you know, we just have some space on, on the blockchain. That's all. The yeah. app tokens, right? <laughs> the app stones. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, the, the app. Is that what well, they're called? Right. I mean, the, I think uh, they're Rye Stone, the but yeah, it's Yap Island. Oh, it's on the island of Yap. Yeah. Something. Oh yeah, yeah. I always like that reminder that we don't really hold Bitcoin. We just keys to ask the blockchain to move Bitcoin from you know, A to B. I think my favorite way of someone said, um, "It's like you you don't you don't own Bitcoin. You just watch those UTXOs for the next generation." I was like, "Oh man, <laughs> that's like the most bullish statement ever." But um, yeah. Anyone, anyone want to chime in on something? I have one more. Like it's more like a news announcement, but um, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, Ellen Strike is about to have on-chain payments, so I think that you know everyone complains about the circular economy and uh, you know mass adoption and Ellen Strike just silently, silently killing it all. You know, freaking Bitcoin assassins. I thought that was pretty pretty dope. That's awesome. Too bad I live in Florida. <laughs> I was so excited about that announcement. Uh, I mean, for for me, uh, you know, I've I've got like KYC Bitcoin, you know, and uh, so I I had to pay a whole bunch of taxes last year on some of the gains because I was spending Bitcoin uh, using Purse. I mean, so I mean, Purse is a a cool service that lets you spend Bitcoin and someone else makes a purchase for you and then they get your Bitcoin in exchange for it. And it doesn't really matter where they are in the world. Um, and you get a discount uh, because you are paying with Bitcoin because there is a demand for Bitcoin either, you know, just wherever they are. Um, however they, you know, they're making this order. Um, so there's not like a whole bunch of questioning about it, but the fact is like, I spent my Bitcoin and now I have like tax consequences because of it. But what Strike has been offering is that they will do the the conversion from fiat to Bitcoin on the fly as part of that transaction. Um, so so I don't have to worry about uh, this like taxable event happening when I decide to use the benefits of of Bitcoin, uh, either the Lightning Network or the, the on-chain infrastructure, uh, which is tremendous because that means now 
just because I know how to use Bitcoin, I'm going to enjoy the benefits of all the discounts. Uh, so, I mean, it's fantastic to me. Just I can magically spend fiat and on its way to the destination, it turns into Bitcoin. So bullish, dude. All right, my question now is like, how do we get our normie friend to use Ellen Strike over PayPal or Venmo or something like that? It's you know like that's that's the real key to quote unquote mass adoption with with an app like this. So they don't. It's like I forget who said it first, but you know once Bitcoin gets mass adoption, people won't even know they're using it. And I feel like Ellen Strike is is that you know that bridge to to where wherever that ends up and so but that's just like my thought i know we'll be using it it's like we do we have to orange pill our friends before we can get them to use ellen strike or can we just basically be like look download this and you can pay anyone anywhere in the world without you know a, a middleman and you know they get bitcoin at the end Seems to me you need people to want to receive Bitcoin, and those people would offer a discount to the person paying to use the system so that they onboard themselves for that discount. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'd be surprised, bro. Like, in a lot of American countries, like, there's there's already what you would consider mass adoption. You know, it just... The problem is that in Western countries, the the currency is so stable, so like there's there's that incentive is not really there. But in countries like you know Turkey, Latin America, whatever, not only do they understand Bitcoin super quickly, but do they use that Lebanon too? Like they use it to survive. It's a matter of life and death. Yeah, I think it was, was it Pierre who said um, people, it's like people aren't going to adopt Bitcoin. They're going to use it because they have no other choice. And I, I kind of feel like that's the situation with most of the first world, except for, you know, people like us, I suppose. Bro, Andreas says it the best. No one gives a fuck until the money breaks. Agreed. Joe just when said mo- that. When, mo- when money's working... <laughs> Joe just Wait, said that in no the chat. Joe literally just <laughs> said that in the chat. He said, no one I know no in real life gives a fuck. <laughs> Yo, Nico, after reading that message Joe just said, I'm on, like, the brink of bringing up socialism, and I'm not going to <laughs> because we'll be on here for I'll, the next four hours. I'll, 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 I'll excuse myself. I'm tired anyways. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to uh, save it. What, is, is Jackie well, here? Is Jackie here? Well, oh, we yeah. we still have the the Jackie Nick Nico uh communism communism sucks presentation to come about at some point. So, oh dude, I'd love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, guys, I've changed my Twitter. You know, because it was it, it was like sixty to seventy percent communist rants, but now it's like fifty fifty again. So, you know, it's good. It's good. I'm improving. It's a change, man. Um, well, shit, guys. We, we've been on this the Teacher's Lounge for about an hour. Um, I We don't have to wrap it up, but does anyone have uh, something that, that came across their feed this week or any Bitcoin thoughts, and, and then we can uh, wrap up on that? Yeah, I got a question, and uh, this – could turn into a, a long conversation. It doesn't have to, but you guys think about wrapped Bitcoin because I obviously Ethereum cannot be a money. Bitcoin is, you know, can be verified, all that. Like I'm, I'm 100 a Bitcoiner, but um, the idea that both are mutually exclusive. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I feel like we're so early in the space, and as a monetary maximalist myself right? i want bitcoin to be used as the money but for other things like uh you know i don't know rap bitcoin or or something like that i mean what are your what are your thoughts on that what is i don't have any of these either way so it's basically okay. yeah so rap bitcoin is <laughs> oh, you explain it or do you want to explain it for somebody else sounds like somebody wanted to uh, I heard about a new one that just came out the other day 
This is one called TBTC, which is like the new fanciest IOU on the Ethereum blockchain. WBTC is pretty much quote unquote Bitcoin on Ethereum. It's just an IOU of Bitcoin. That's and you're holding this WBTC or TBTC, depending on both the smart contract, Ethereum network, and in some cases nodes within like for instance, TBTC has something called keeper nodes that are the ones that. Graph BTC is just held in BitGo. So, like, it's just yeah. like an exchange, but instead of using SQL and having no trading fees, you have Ethereum and you have to pay ridiculous gas fees. It's like, you know, it's basically useless, but. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of like a... It's an IOU, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, a, I don't know, kind of almost an attack on Ethereum where, you know, because like Bitcoin is just better money than Ethereum. So people are just like using that now on Ethereum, which is kind of ironic. And like, I could see it where it becomes like in a unit of a, of account on there versus like everything currently is in Ethereum just because it's easier for them right now. But... If enough Bitcoin gets locked up on there, it's possible that that takes over, which would be pretty hilarious. But I'm also pretty sure that when you lock your Bitcoin into one of these contracts, because if I understood this correctly, at that point, it's you're putting this on a platform and you no longer have keys to that platform. That's correct. You lose your keys. So basically, you give them your Bitcoin. They hang on to it, they're almost like a bank, right? So they hold, a, hold on to it. like a right? horrific idea, bro. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. yeah, but they basically lend it out and then they give you, you know, like some shit like, like rap, you know, WBTC, and then you can spend that WBTC and that's pretty much like the fiat note that's redeemable for gold per se, Bitcoin being the gold. But let me ask you this, right? Like, who's who's accepting WBTC for any good? Exactly. I know. Right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's my. That was the number one question I had when I first started reading it. It's like you may as well just be spending Bitcoin, and obviously, you know, we're more advocates of holding it than, uh, you know, accumulating it. But you know, you may as well just spend it directly. I don't know. I when I heard about this, uh, the the bacon wrapped Ethereum or whatever it is, like. <laughs> I, honestly, like I was like, okay, this is just another scam to separate you from your. No, it, isn't the, somebody the, the it, Cheeto wrapped Ethereum is much better? <laughs> isn't go, go, the Jim. idea that somebody would accept it because it can be turned in for real Bitcoin, and so you know, you can take it as a you know, even though you're not getting the Bitcoin keys, you just say, okay, well, I got this wrapped Bitcoin now. I'm just gonna transfer it back into Bitcoin. And somebody's got to give it to you, but obviously we know somebody doesn't have to give it to you. No, and but the, lies, and, and the, the problem. problem, the 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 problem, the problem with Ethereum fundamentally is is the smart contracts. At the end of the day, there has to be a, some type of central authority that makes the rules, and you need to trust that central authority to play by the rules. And what's been happening, right, like historically speaking, right, like if, if you just look at traditional in traditional finance, the people that are centrally in charge of banks, guess what happens? They end up cheating, right? So what you're replacing essentially would be, you know, a banker, the Fed with an Ethereum developer. And you're putting a lot of trust in that Ethereum developer to – to do the right thing. And now the Ethereum junkies would be like, oh yeah, but that code is audited. What the fuck does that mean? You know, like, do you trust a, a coded, that you trust some random dude auditing? Yeah, code? you can personally verify it and you do not know. I agree with that. So it's, I don't know, bro. Like it, it's personally, man, like, you know, like, like perhaps I'm really biased and whatnot, but like, bro, just, just hold BTC, man. It re it's really that simple, bro. Like, Nico, I think you're spot on. What? I, I, I think you're spot on because as soon as you move away from Bitcoin, uh, you don't have the security that Bitcoin offers. Like, why do we pay Bitcoin transaction fees? Because 
like that supports the security of the network. Um, and we don't necessarily need to buy things Whoa. with Bitcoin for it to Whoa. have value. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Hold like, on. No, you don't pay yeah. Bitcoin transaction fees to do that. You you pay them to pay me, bro, <laughs> so that I could mine your stuff. <laughs> See, there we go. <laughs> so, I'm just kidding, Justin, I mean, right? like, <laughs> you keep going. Yeah, there's like tons of eyes on the on the Bitcoin protocol. Um, like, you know, there's lots of value locked up in there. So we have, uh, you know, the most secure platform. However, now we're moving on to Ethereum or some of these other platforms where you have protocol risk or you have custodial risk. But somehow with like WBTC, you still have to pay transaction fees. So... If I have custodial risk or protocol risk, why am I having to pay to secure this network when it could just be a database? Yep. I mm. completely agree. Completely agree. Yeah, I mean, like I I haven't even looked into the technicals, but it just sounds like they're creating the exact same system that we're trying to get away from. But, you know, it's on a blockchain, you know, my blockchain. So now it's revolutionary. But they're basically just creating, you know, uh, the centralized financial world that we are trying to get away with or get away from and calling it something new. Mm -hmm. And we all know how that, you know, that story ends up. So I'm guessing it's only a matter of time until all hell breaks loose. Yeah, in the end, you're taking... Bitcoin that you could control yourself, which is the safest way to hold it if you run your own node, as we all know, and you're basically giving it to somebody else, I assume you're getting some kind of a return on it. But the point is, you don't own it anymore. And you're putting it at risk uh, that you're going to be able to get it back by redeeming this token they've given you. And that token, as we know, is, is run on a completely different blockchain, which is a mess called Ethereum. So like, what would be the point of it? It's silly, right? So uh, you're just uh, potentially losing your Bitcoin by wrapping it in some stupid Ethereum contract. What you do? Is yeah, I agree. I think it's creating the same system over again. And you can't, you know, people have the ability to uh, inflate the supply of something they will. But uh, I think it's important to just be able to counter that. Uh, belief because basically right now i believe there are, are over a billion dollars worth of uh, tokenized bitcoin the ethereum network which is a lot of money so you know i think it's important to know why you tell people not to do something like this to understand it at yeah, least. people are stupid they think they're going <laughs> to gain something by doing that you're never going to stop <laughs> people from being stupid yeah, don't do that, bro. Use the Bitcoin network, bro. You know, transact, you know, you know, pay me some fees, man. It's the way to go. Yeah, look, there's people that are going to get some returns by doing this. They're going to show how smart they were by doing it. But everything you do in life takes a risk. I wouldn't take the risk personally. But, you know, if you think you're going to win, go for it. Roll the dice, take the risk. You can trade, too, like a lot of people think they can do. And good luck to you there, you know. So... It's, uh, you know, you're just adding risk onto what should be, uh, you know, it's one of the most scarce, it's the most scarce asset on the planet. Let's put it that way, right? This digital code that was invented that we can transfer value around the world. And as people adopt it, uh, that you guys were talking before about the value of fiat, you know, and what it's going to be worth. And Bitcoin just sucks up the value of everything else into the units that are available. So each unit has to become worth more in order to handle the value of all the things that are out there in society and the money system that people need to use to transact. And so, you know, why would you put that at risk when you have some of it? Just hold on to it and don't go on a boat. <laughs> or do. Who knows? Nah. <laughs> or do, or do lose key your keys in on this the industry. boat. Yeah. OPSEC is important. Where, yeah, but, you know, like really, it's just silly. You know, like, yeah, so you might get a return, you might get lucky, but you know, you could lose your shirt and then you're going to be kicking yourself. That's the story you don't want to tell your grandkids. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a like a good point to wrap up on. Um, we preach uh, low time preference a lot on this show. We uh, have 
have emphasized that point. I think we're going to do a presentation on it, but I personally have noticed that a lot of uh, altcoiners, or as we love to call them, shitcoiners, don't have a low time preference. They have a really high time preference of trying to get rich now. And as we've seen in the past, you know, trying to fall into a get rich quick scheme, it's a very easy way to lose everything you have if you don't manage your risk. And so we're here to tell you, you know, take take the long route. Like, you know, there's no shortcuts to success. Grind it out, build something dope, and the sats will flow to you. So, you know, stay humble, stack sats. Nick, you want to wrap it up? Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for coming out again, staying through the presentation portion and Teacher's Lounge. Um, really means a lot. You guys make the show, and you guys keep me and Optimus wanting to come back each and every single week. So I'll see you all next week. You guys keep us working. Let's go. All right, see you guys. Peace.